tough as nails. It's hard to practice what you preach, this statement, especially true of backing up. Uh, sometimes I forget to back up things. Sometimes I accidentally delete things that I shouldn't delete. Sometimes I actually lose podcasts I was supposed to put on the air. <laughs> but, in fact, in a recent survey, I'm not alone. According to Apple Computers, only 27% of us back up our documents. Only 4% of us do it automatically. So maybe it's time to automate the process, because if you don't automate it, chances are you ain't going to do it. Wes Tobler is here. He is, of course, with the great Hack 5 video podcast at hak5.org. And he's going to show us how to build an automated backup solution. Now, you could go to the store. You could. This is actually what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't buy this one, but I purchased what's called network attached storage, which is basically a hard drive or a number of hard drives. In my case, I got four. I got a gigabyte, uh, mm -hmm. a terabyte, uh, with an Ethernet connection on the back. Mm -hmm. The truth is, it's a little computer, but you can't tell. And this goes on your network and can be used to automatically back up. Not just back up, it could also serve media and, yeah. and all sorts of things. It's kind of a centralized file server. Yeah, Linksys has the slug, which is similar. Yeah. Now, this is $1,000, though. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? $800, but it's a huge amount of money. Yeah. If you've got an old computer lying around, you can do the same thing, right? Yes, you can. So show us how. Okay, basically what we have here in this particular case, this is our network attached storage right here. And uh, what's really neat about this, this is uh, the software we're using is called Free NAS, Free NAS, and that's based off of the Free BSD 6.0 release. See, I like that because I, I have to say I'm not going to trust it if it's running Windows or even Mac OS. I want it to be running a Unix, like a right. Linux or BSD. Very yeah, solid, very best. reliable. Yeah, I love BSD. And but what this ISO is so light that you put on it, it fits on this compact flash card. <laughs> that's an amazing thing. So that's, in fact, the case with a lot of those network, the commercial ones, is that the, the operating system is running off firmware. It's running mm -hmm. off yeah. hardware. And that makes it more reliable. Yeah, in theory. Yeah. It's definitely better than a hard drive that spins constantly. Exactly, yeah. And we bought this uh, fairly inexpensive uh, compact flash to IDE. And you can actually uh, install it on a compact flash card, a USB thumb drive, or another hard drive. How big a up. card do you need? I think that's a 32. It's a 32 or 64. 32 megabytes? That's all? That's it. Oh, that's it's it. tiny. It's very, very light. So the operating system is running on this. And again, that way, I mean, you're going to have hard drives in your NAS, but at least yeah. the operating system is always available on firmware. Exactly. It's very easy to do. Fast booting, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's very fast. Um, and then all you need is obviously the uh, bootable CD-ROM. A C, uh, compact flash or whatever you want to do it. Like I said, with the USB thumb drive, you could actually have even more hard drives in there. That's because you can't boot from this? Oh, uh, not directly, no. You so have you to boot have from the CD-ROM, CD ROM and it's a bootloader, ISO. and then it goes to that. Okay. Yeah, and you just install it on the ISO, and then later we'll have to format the hard drive right here. Okay, and you could put more than one hard drive in here, right? Yes, it even supports uh, software RAID. Great, so you could have up to four drives or even yeah. more, I or guess. however many uh, ID chains you have. Right. And uh, what's cool is if you look over here, this is the console for the actual NAS drive. So when you, uh, this is, you're seeing this over the network or you're seeing this directly this on? Directly this off of that Off machine. of this computer. So this yes. is the operating system running. Yes, okay. it is right here. And uh, what we'd start off is when we boot off of the CD, we'd eventually get this screen here. And you only do this once to configure yeah. it. Okay. Right. And then we'd come down here to option number seven, which tells us to install on a hard drive, compact flash, or USB. Key. Oh, I see. So this is what we're seeing off the CD-ROM. Got yeah. it. Okay. Initially. Yeah. And then we'd install off of there and it's very quick, you reboot, and then you come back up here to option number one, interfaces assigned network ports. Okay. And that's where you'd have to find out what chipset you have in your network card to know if it's like ETH0 or Auth0, what, what's your network interface on the machine. Now this is something a lot of Windows users have never seen or dealt right. with. because Windows is always plug and play and it just works. Yeah, it doesn't tell you, but you always have an EHT0 mm -hmm. or something else. There's something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, yeah. And once we assign it, this is our network device, then we'd have to come to option two after we reboot again mm -hmm. and set up our LAN IP address. And we'd Doesn't give it do static. DHCP. You have to actually set it. Yeah, you s you'd set it with a static IP because if something were to ever happen, your network went down. Oh, say you yeah. map a network drive to this. <laughs> you don't want to change the IP address. Right. Here. You it want needs it to be forever. Static. So right. set a number, a high number that's not going to be used in a DHCP if you still right. have DHCP running. But I mean, like this one's set for, uh, it's on a class C, it's 192.168.1.66. Right. Okay. Now we have very few computers on our network, so we wouldn't have to worry about it. Right. This is an actual, in, uh, this is actually being used. This is in service. Yes, oh, that's yes it is. You threw it in the back of the Crown Vic and brought it up. Sure did. Wow. All right. And then after all that's done, you take the CD-ROM out, let okay. it boot up again. So this you don't need the CD-ROM except to install. Correct. Got it. And then this is, after, this is what we're seeing off of that compact flash drive. So now we're running off of the little flash memory. Right. Okay. 
And so it's up, it's running, everything's good. We don't have to worry about this anymore. You'll never see it again. Never see it again. You can unplug the monitor, keyboard, throw it in the closet, attach to the network. That's one of the nice things about a NAS device. It doesn't, it's headless. It doesn't have, have to have a monitor or keyboard. Right. And this won't either. I mean, it's a little bigger than it, but, it, but basically that now goes in the closet. Well, the idea is it's a spare computer, so it's free. Right. And anywhere you got an Ethernet uh, jack, you can just plug this in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Now, now, how do we maintain it, though? If we don't have a, a disk, uh, I mean, a monitor or a keyboard or a mouse, what do we do? We have a web interface that we oh, log into. Oh, you can surf to this. Machine. Yes. Oh, okay. And just using your uh, net browser. I'll switch over so switch we can see what's here. on your laptop. This is the free NAS software running. I guess. Okay. There's our web interface there right now, free NAS. Now, by default, when you go to log into it from your web browser, it asks for uh, login and password. Right. And it's admin and free NAS by default. That's the default. But you will change that, of Obviously. course, because you don't want anybody else to be using it. Yeah. Right? And then here we are. This is what we're looking at. And all we'd have to do is come up here to disk management. And then we'd have to... Uh, you actually create a RAID array. You can. You or can. you just format it. Uh, yeah. You just format it. We'd have to say add a it's disk one drive. right yeah. here. Okay. And then there's our flash drive that we see right there in disk. So you don't format that. New, 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 new. You look <laughs> for the, the big, big one. The big drive right <laughs> okay. there. And that's the hard drive we have in there now. It's already been formatted. But, the, you know, that's how that is. And then all you'd have to do is add. Okay, we won't do it because you've no. already done that. Backspace. So it's now part of your array. Your, uh, and then your, you just format it. And then you can run... Now, normally you would run copy software on your PCs that would automatically copy to this. Mm -hmm. But th will this also copy? Does this have its built-in copy capability backup built into it? Oh, um, Some NASes do. I'm just wondering if I, this does. I'm not sure. I think you can do it. I'm not sure. You would probably do it. Most likely you'd do it from the PC. To that. To that. This is your backup. This shows up as a mapped network drive, which you just back up to. Well, you can, you can map drives. a network drive. Right, you know. right. And then you, after you format it, you come down here to services, to CIFS, and CIF, CIFS really resembles Samba mount. Right. So that way our Windows machines can see this and write to it. And you just turn it on in here, enable, there it is. Windows or Mac or Linux, they'll all see SIFS drives. Right. Right. And then it also has other options, like you could run an FTP from it. Wow, that's If nice. you so desired and have that uh, It's all fits in 32 it. megs, it's amazing. Yeah. Wow. And then from there, now you've got your NAS up and running. That's all you need for mm -hmm. that. We actually, uh, we have a uh, script that you can run. Where'd it go? There it is. We call it a backup. Oh, this, bat. is, this is how you do the backup. Yeah, this is a batch file. That <laughs> it's was that written. simple. Yeah. And, and you, you just run that on schedule? Mm -hmm. You can use like the at command or mm -hmm. there's a... Uh, you mentioned a, another Windows tool for backing up? Yep, there's all sorts of ways you could do it. I mean, once you've got this thing on the network, it mm -hmm. looks like an external drive right. that you could back up to. And you could figure out how you want to back up. Yeah, however you want to do it. Like this or one's automatic. use iTunes and have your music be on. I mean, there's all sorts of mm -hmm. ways you could use this. Yeah. This is, I think, more and more people are going to be using network attached storage. A lot of us will go out, as I did, and buy a commercial version. But if you've got an old PC lying around and enough hard drives hanging out, and most yeah. of us do that, it's easy enough to do. We've got all the details on the website, callforhelptv.com.